In this video, I want to talk about five things that you should review if you're going to take chemistry in the next upcoming semester. So the first thing you need to be familiar with is the periodic table. For those of you who are taking chemistry, I recommend memorizing most of the elements on a table. So for example, the symbol H, you need to know that it corresponds to the element hydrogen. The symbol, let's say HE, corresponds to helium. So you need to know these things. I remember during the first week of my AP Chemistry class, we were told on the first day that we had to memorize about 60 elements. I think it was about 60, but 60 elements on a periodic table, and we could be quizzed on any one of them. And the next day we had the pop quiz. But this is one of the first things you want to be able to do if you're taking chemistry, and that is you need to know the symbols and the names of the elements that correspond to them. So some other common ones that you'll see, N, and this stands for nitrogen, C is carbon, O stands for oxygen, and there's some others that you need to know. Now, I do have another video that goes over the elements of the periodic table, the ones that you need to memorize. And I'm going to post a link in the description section of this video. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now the second topic that you need to be familiar with is unit conversion. So if you're taking chemistry or even physics, you need to know how to convert from one unit into another unit. So let's say, for example, if you wish to convert 36 feet into yards. How would you do it? Well, first you need to know the conversion factor, and that is one yard is equal to three feet. And once you have that, you can now convert it. So starting with 36 feet, always start with what you're given, and then in the next fraction, you want to write down your conversion factor. Now, because we have the unit feet on top, in the second fraction, we need to put the unit feet on the bottom so that these units will cancel, and thus the unit yards will go on top. Now, we have a 1 in front of the unit yard and a 3 in front of the unit feet. And so we're going to set it up this way. This tells us that we need to divide whenever you have a number on top and one on the bottom. So we're going to divide the top number by the number on the bottom. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And so 36 feet is equivalent to 12 yards. Now sometimes, instead of converting units of length, you may need to convert units of area. So let's say if we have, let me think of a good number, 246 square inches and we wish to convert it to square feet. How can we do so? Now, how many inches are in a foot? You need to know that in one foot there are 12 inches. And so let's start with what we're given, 246 square inches over 1. Now, for the next fraction, we're going to use our conversion factor. So we're going to put the unit inches on the bottom and feet on top so that these will cancel. Now we know that 12 inches is equal to a foot. However, here we have square inches. This is inches to the first power. So they won't completely cancel yet. Therefore, we need to do something. What we need to do is square the conversion factor. We need to divide it by 12 inches two times. And so now inches squared will cancel, giving us uh, square feet. So it's going to be 246 divided by 12, and then which is 20.5. Take that result divided by 12 again. And you should get 1.7083 
square feet. And so that's how you can convert units of area from one unit to another unit. For those of you who want more practice on converting units, I'm going to post another video in the description section of this video. Now, for those of you who wish to subscribe to this channel, uh, make sure to click the notification bell if you want to receive any updates on new videos that I'm going to post in the future. Now, let's move on to number three. The third thing that you need to be familiar with is the metric system. And this is going to help you regardless if you're taking chemistry or physics. Now, in the metric system, you need to be familiar with things such as kilo. If you see the word kilo, it represents 10 to the third. Mega represents 10 to the sixth. Giga is 10 to the nine. Terra is 10 to the 12. Now let's say this is the baseline. Below that we have things like deci, which is 10 to the minus 1, centi, 10 to the negative 2, milli, that's 10 to the minus 3, micro, it's 10 to the negative 6, nano, that's 10 to the negative 9, and uh, pico, which is 10 to the minus 12. Now there are some other ones, this is not a complete list, however, these are the ones that you're most likely to see, the most common ones that you'll see when dealing with the metric system. But let me show you how to use it. So feel free to write these things down because I'm going to delete this page. So we said that nano corresponds to 10 to the minus 9. So what this means is that 1 nanometer is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 9 of the base unit meters. Or one nanojoule of energy is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 joules of energy. So things like nano, pico, centi, you would always put a 1 next to it. And the multiplier goes with the base unit, which is, could be meters, seconds, joules, kilograms, I'm mean not kilograms, but grams, and stuff like that. Here is another example. Centi is 10 to minus 2 as we said before. So this means that 1 centimeter is 1 times 10 to minus 2 meters. Now if you multiply both sides by 100 you can also get this common conversion factor. On the left you'll get 100 centimeters. If you multiply 1 times 10 to minus 2 by 100 you'll get 1. So this also means that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Now another example is kilo. We said that kilo is 10 to the 3. So this means that 1 kilometer is 1 times 10 to the 3rd meters, or 1,000 meters. Or we could say that 1 kilogram is 1 times 10 to the 3 grams, or 1,000 grams. Let's do one more. So giga is 10 to the 9. So a gigahertz, which is a unit of frequency, that's 1 times 10 to the 9 hertz. So you need to be familiar with the metric system, but most importantly, you need to be able to extract a conversion factor from it. This will help you to convert from one unit to another. And again, I have another video that focuses on the metric system and how to solve unit conversion problems with it. Now, the fourth thing you need to be familiar with is scientific notation. You need to be able to write numbers in this form or convert it back to standard notation or decimal notation. For instance, the number 4.2 times 10 to the 3 is equivalent to 4,200. So if you have a positive number or positive exponent above 10, you need to move the decimal point three units to the right, and that'll give you uh, this decimal value. Pretty much if you see a positive exponent on a 10, it indicates a large number. If you see a negative exponent, it would indicate a small number. For instance, 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. To convert it from scientific notation to a standard notation, you need to move the decimal point four units to the left. 
so you'll get 0 0.00035. Let me take this out. So the decimal point was here, but we move it 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the left. And so if you keep that in mind, if you see a negative exponent, it's associated with a very small number between 0 and 1. Or if you see a positive exponent, it's associated with a large number. And so that can help you to convert from scientific notation into decimal notation and vice versa. So for instance, let's say if I have 7,500, actually let's say 75,400, and I wish to convert it to scientific notation. Because this is a big number, I know that my exponent will be positive. Now my decimal point is here. I need to move it between the first two non-zero digits on the left. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four spaces. So this is going to be 7.54. If you want to, you can add the other zeros times 10 to the fourth power. But the other zeros are not important. So I'm just going to write it like this. Now let's try one more. Let's say 0 0.058. So this is a small number, which will be associated with a negative exponent. So I'm going to move the decimal point between the first two non-zero numbers. And so it's going to be 5.8 times 10 to the minus 2. And so that's a simple way in which you can convert a number in standard notation into scientific notation. And I'm going to have some more examples in another video that I will post in the comment, I mean in the description section of this video that you're watching. Now the fifth area is significant figures. Now there's three things you need to be able to do with this. You need to know how to count significant figures and how to round them, particularly when you're adding and subtracting or when you're multiplying and dividing. So let's say if I have the number 356. All of the non-zero numbers are considered significant. So I have three significant figures in this number. Now let's say if I have the number 4,300. The zeros after the three are not significant. So I only have two significant figures, not four. If I had 50,400, the zeros that exist between two non-zero numbers are significant. So there are three significant figures. Now I won't go into too much detail into sig figs. I'll post another video that has more examples on it, but I just want to show you uh, which topics you should review if you're going to take chemistry or physics because it'll give you a head start in those classes. And so feel free to review those other videos that I'm going to post in the description section of this video. So that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.